All right, I'm going to do this one because I can't find anything on the internet besides two comments on an Amazon review that says, I went and I found this sensor and then I swapped it and they sent me some janky video to do it. But there's no reference to the sensor and there's no reference to the video. So instead, I'm going to make a video. Let's get started. So this here is my wife's Colzer 15 inch wine fridge. And as you can see, I've pulled everything out of it. But what's happening is that it has this E3 error on it. Digging around on the internet, the E3 error appears to be related to the actual sensor, which I think is that guy right back there in the middle. Uh, but I can't tell because I can't find a parts video for it. So I'm going to pull this apart and take some couple of pictures. And we're going to find out if that's actually the sensor and then create the worst parts diagram in the world so that we can see how to replace it. I also figure I'm going to show one other thing, which is actually how to pull these shelves out, because there's not really a grand diagram in the video. You can see that there are these little nubbies right here that you can flip down, and normally you would flip those down to just pull out the shelf, and you think, hooray, if I pull it out. That's not actually the case. For these, you actually need to pull them out a little bit and then pull down on them, and then that gives you enough tension that you can actually use it to pull the shelf out. So we'll start that one over here. And do the same thing to this one over here, pull it down, and now you can see we've got enough movement in the shelf on the one side and over here, and the shelf begins to slide out easily as opposed to the one below it, or if you just try to move it, push these down on the side, it comes nowhere. So most rational human beings might actually turn the power off before they do something. However, it's not really what I wanted to do because I kind of wanted to see how this was running. Um, uh, so, you know, obviously you should pull, pull the power plug if you're going to do this, um, unless you think you know what you're doing, in which case I think I do, but I don't really know. With that, we've pulled off the screws that are over here in the corners. Relatively easy to pull them off. Let me see, we've got our fan that's running up here, and then we can see we've got our temperature sensor that looks to be run through here. So I think we can probably just take this temperature sensor here, pop it off, and we should be able to, to roll with it. Now obviously we'll want to kill the electricity uh, and whatnot when we do that, but it's at least good to be able to pull this apart because we can see that we're actually getting uh, a little bit of frost over here on this, um, which probably means that it might be might be spending a, a little bit more time in cooling than it should. Um, because it's starting to, to take the air, which is really only supposed to be in like the 40s for this and, and bring it down far colder than that. One little zip tie that kind of holds all these wires together back here. Um, so I just snipped that. And now what we're going to do is basically take, uh, these are um, little pressure sensitive things and in my infinite wisdom, I'm just going to tap them real fast with a, a screwdriver to pop them out and then they should pop out on the front side like that. At least I got one out. Now I have to put the camera down to get the other out but they're just these little um, pressure screws or pressure rivets I guess. All right so after we got that out it's really pretty simple we just kind of unwind this guy right here our temperature probe and we straighten it out we run it right back through the line that we got it from. Um, set this, down. this is really interesting to me in the fact that if you notice they've got this like direct wired. However for the fan um, they actually have like a CPU fan connectors right so you could actually use that and disconnect the CPU fan if you really wanted to or excuse me the CPU fan the fan if you wanted to and you actually needed to replace that. Um, which could be entertaining as well. This looks like it's just a standard probe, but I'm going to uh, quickly ask a couple of my friends and dig into the wiring that's on it to see if I can figure out and make sure that it's the right kind before I go out and buy one. All right, so to take this off so I can hopefully fish that wire all the way about, figure out what it is, there's actually two tiny screw holes, one on the bottom of each one of these, that are right underneath it. So the screw is actually near the top. If you can see it right there. See right there is where the screw is. It goes all the way through it. So you're going to fish the screwdriver up, kind of wiggle it around and get it seated so that you can actually pull it back um, and pull that screw out.
And then there's also two more um, behind this. And we'll see if we can see it, but there's probably not enough light up in here. Right up behind these, the, the tray here, there's one here and one here. So you'll want to pull those as well if you're doing something crazy like me, which is trying to pull this entire thing apart. All right, so good news, bad news. Uh, the good news is there's a connector up here for both the uh, what are for, uh, the inside temperature and then essentially the other temperature sensors, this red wire on the coils. Um, and it's got a nice little connector here. The bad news is, is it's fished all the way back and around through here, which means that I'm not going to be able to fish that around. So what we're likely going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to cut this wire that's back here and we're going to splice on a new temperature sensor and replace it. All right, so I thought about it a little more and I didn't really want to tear this apart all the way first before I figured out actually which one of the sensors is bad um, because I noticed that there were two of them. One's red wire, one's white wire, but they're probably both roughly the, the same part number because, you know, that's how manufacturers try to build things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop both of these on, uh, add a couple of extra lead wires here and check the resistance of them. And then uh, after I've had an opportunity to let this cool, um, see if I can find something that matches roughly the resistance that I'm seeing for one at about the time, uh, at about the, the household temperature, which is about 69, 68 degrees. Since you don't need to watch me debug this, I'm just going to tell you that the E3 error is the red sensor or the one that is on the coils, depending on if that is how they manufactured your fridge, and that it is a 10K resistor, excuse me, thermistor. And so this is the one that I got off of Amazon to replace it, and it worked just fine. So anyway, that's it for me. I'm not going to show you how to put it back together because it's really just splicing two wires together, and then you go back through all the steps. And I'm not going to try to do that holding the camera because I will do a miserable job at showing it to you. So with that, I hope it helped you. If it did, let me know in the comments. If you decided that maybe you found what the other maybe E3 or E4 error was, please let me know as well, because I'd be really excited to know what those other errors are in the event that I see them in the future. Thanks and have fun.